obvious i am trying to beat all the churches going live at 10 o'clock i thought that would be uh, interesting to see who is available to uh, chat about this now i'm doing this downstairs where i'm comfortable i've got my multiple screens things are a lot better down here so i would i have the chat up today uh, i didn't have the chat going last week when we talked about the lockdown so i can see you uh, would love to hear your input on the topic today. Uh, Going to talk about the fruit, not fruits of the Spirit. At least that's the plan. I had a picture of um, <clears throat> Olive up yesterday. Uh, we talked about the fruit of the Spirit, did a little activity with the kids, had a great time. And then when we got together with the fellowship, we discussed this topic as well. So uh, I just wanted to do a brain dump of some of the wonderful things that we talked about <clears throat> in the discussion. Now, today, I think we're only going to get through uh, love, joy, and peace. We talked about all the fruit of the Spirit, but man, the fellowship lasted for, I don't know, gosh, we were, we were chatting for almost three hours. So uh, definitely not going to try and have a, a live broadcast that that is that long for sure. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it. So the one of the big revelations that kind of hit me right off the bat in uh, this topic is the fact that if you had asked me yesterday before I had started studying on this, you know, what are the fruits of the Spirit, then I would have said, oh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, you know, I would have rattled off the list. But now if you ask me that question, I would stop and say, hang on just a second. It doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit are. It says, this is the fruit of the Spirit. So uh, does it matter? Yes, I believe it definitely matters. And the reason it matters is because in the natural, you see an apple tree can only produce apples and an orange tree can only produce oranges. But when you get into the supernatural, you see things like this. Now, let's see if I can flip around between uh, the Bible and everything just like I do normally. All right, let's take a look at Revelation 22. One and two, it says, uh-oh, it's not fitting. Let me fix that. I'm getting used to this Facebook Live thing here. Bear with me. Uh, <clears throat> it says, the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life, check this out, with its 12 kinds of fruit yielding its fruit each month. Uh, very cool. So you see that... In the supernatural, trees are not limited to producing just one kind of fruit, and neither are we. Um, I think it goes without saying that a tree is known by its fruit. Yeshua said every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And in fact, this statement is so important. Just doing a search uh, right before I hopped on here, I noticed that he says that in Matthew 3.10, and he says it again in Matthew seven nineteen, So uh, obviously very important thing. When Yeshua says something twice, just a couple chapters away from each other, you know it's a big deal. Uh, that's just another way of saying that we are going to be judged by our fruit. So it's obviously very important. Now, Paul mentions nine kinds of fruit that every person who is walking in the Spirit should be producing. And that is in Galatians 522. So, of course, the list is the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness. Uh, wait a minute. Goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Um, so those are the fruits of the Spirit. And it's important to realize that we acknowledge that these aren't, that these are not fruits of the Spirit like uh, gifts of the Spirit. There's an important distinction there. See, with regard to the gifts of the Spirit, some people have one and then they don't have the other. Uh, you may have tongues, but you may not have the interpretation of tongues, for example. But this cannot be said about a believer who is walking in the Spirit when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit. See, some may say, you know, I have love, but I'm not very patient. And some may say, I have peace, but I'm not the best at showing kindness. What is really being said there is that uh, I still let the flesh reign in these aspects of my life. And trust me, this, you know, studying this out certainly stepped on my toes for sure. Greg is not preaching down to anybody. I am only talking to myself. 
So, uh, so let's talk about the first fruit of the Spirit, which is love. Um, you know, there are different kinds of love. There are different words for love in the Greek, and I'm only going to talk about two of them this morning. There is uh, agape love, which is the one that's mentioned here in this text, and there's also uh, phileo love. Now, I'm no Greek scholar, so if I'm boogering those words, please forgive me. Um, but agape love is really love in action. Okay, that's the love that we have for our Father. This love is not based on feelings. Most people have heard the song, I don't know, love makes me think of country songs for whatever reason, and I do not like country music. <laughs> you know that song, I Can't Make You Love Me? Uh, it says, uh, you can't make your heart feel something that it won't. Well, phileo love is based on feelings, that warm, fuzzy feeling you get when you think about you know, some of your closest friends, that kind of thing. That's brotherly love. Now, I love my wife. I love my kids. I love my parents and my sister. And I love my friends. But it's a different kind of love for each of these different groups, though. Now, I didn't mention it, but the Bible does command us to love our enemies, right? Now, I'm going to just say this, and you have to agree with me. If you are a moral human being, then you are not going to feel warm, squishy feelings when you when you think about the uh, the feminazis rejoicing when abortion laws are passed. You know, you've you've seen the videos of them celebrating and crying, excited about the opportunity to legally murder babies. Now, there is no phileo love in my heart for evil people. Uh, these people absolutely are the enemies of God and the enemies of humanity, and I don't apologize for saying that. It's the truth. We cannot love them like we love our best friends, and we're not commanded to. Okay, There's an important distinction there. Yahweh does not ask us to do things that are impossible. All right, What we can do is we can follow peace with all men as much as it is possible with us. Uh, we can do what the Torah tells us to do. If we take a look in Exodus 23, verses 4 and 5, you can see this. It says, if you meet your enemy's ox or donkey going astray, you shall bring it back to him. If you see the donkey of the one who hates you lying down under its burden, you shall refrain from leaving him with it. You shall rescue it with him. Uh, that That is something that you can do. Okay, You can do that. That's the kind of love that we must show our enemies. Uh, good morning, Mr. Varani. Hope I got your last name right, brother. Uh, Exodus, let's see, where's the next place we're going? Proverbs 25, 21 through 22 says this. It says, if your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord Yahweh will reward you. You know, who knows? Demonstrating this kind of behavior towards an enemy could have such a profound effect on them. It might help them to uh, examine themselves. But the reality is, either way, the Father will be pleased with you, and that's all you can do. Now, there's a lot that could be said about love, but I definitely want to mention, uh, I would love to hear in the comments if how many of you know this book, a wonderful book called The Five Love Languages. So if you don't mind, shoot me a message and let me know, is this something that you have read uh, as a couple? This book, it really teaches a beautiful truth. It's an absolute truth that different people receive love differently. Now, my love languages are very simple, words of affirmation and physical touch. I heard that uh, I heard a brother say, most men are just like puppies. All we want is a treat and to hear you say, good boy, <laughs> and that's it. But <clears throat> women, women are not puppies. Women are more like cats. You know, how do you make a cat happy? The answer is no, nobody knows. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> but the other love languages in the book are uh, quality time, acts of service, and gift giving. Uh, the big eye-opening lesson um, from this book is that every couple needs to understand that uh, it we're all different. We all learn. We all receive love differently. Now, for example, for me, when my wife compliments me, it's a big deposit in my love bank. But when I compliment my wife. It don't impress her much, to borrow another lyric from a country song. My mom used to have a, uh, a magnet on her fridge that said, uh, it said, Mom likes hugs, 
mom loves kisses, but what mom would really like is help with the dishes. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny. So when we really love somebody, we will find out what they want and we'll do that for them, uh, even if it's not our love language. Sometimes that feels a bit like uh, speaking a foreign language, but when you love someone, you'll do all the crazy things that you can't explain, right? You're going to do whatever you need to do to, uh, to show love to that person. Now, God has a love language, and that love language is clearly revealed to us in Scripture. It is no coincidence, I believe, that love is the chief fruit of the Spirit. And the clear reason for that is 1 John 5, 3, which says, This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And I notice, look, my wife is making a deposit into my love bank. Thank you, honey. I appreciate that. <laughs> this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Okay, another verse that goes along with that is 2 John 1, 6. It says, This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. Now, the way we show God love is through obedience to his instructions. Yeshua confirms this. I've got a lot of scripture because this is such an important thing to recognize. John 14, 15 says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Very simple. Uh, in that passage, I'll just leave that section up there. You can look at it. You can see that it talks about the Holy Spirit, which is called the helper. Uh, the Holy Spirit's primary function is to help us keep God's commandments. <clears throat> and that makes perfect sense when you think about it, because the primary fruit of the Spirit is love. Uh, you'll notice there in verse 21, uh, I think Yeshua puts a nice bow on this when he says, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So that is how we show love to the Father and to the Son. It's through obedience. <clears throat> now, it's interesting that Yahweh shows his love to us through gift giving. Everybody knows John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 teaches us that God gives us apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers to help equip the saints. He gives us his spirit and all the things that go along with it. For some, it's a struggle to speak a love language that is not theirs, but really that's how you measure your love for someone. Um, remember the eternal truth that's undeniable that obedience is better than sacrifice. So if you want to love Yahweh, do what he says instead of ignoring his commandments and then working your butt off in some other area. Uh, what impresses man does not impress our Father. Now, there's a lot more that could be said about love, but I really want to get through a couple more of the other fruits in a much quicker passes. So the next fruit we want to chat about is joy. Uh, I love the way the Strong's defines joy. Um, if you look up the word there in Galatians 5, it will the primary definition it shows is calm delight. What a cool definition for the word joy. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen the uh, Pixar movie uh, Inside Out. I, I thought that movie was a trip. I really enjoyed it. It personifies a young girl's emotions. And if you've seen it, you remember there was sadness and anger, disgust, and then joy. And joy is the hero of the movie. Uh, she's always looking on the bright side, staying positive and finding the good in everything. <clears throat> but I want to point out the reality that joy is not happiness. Uh, I think this is kind of similar to the differences in agape love and phileo love because feelings change, right? Happiness is more like, uh, like an emotional spike. It's something that comes and goes. You're happy when you get a raise at work and you are not happy when an unexpected bill shows up that you didn't budget for, right? But you can have joy through it all. I think it's pretty cool that the first instruction that James drops on us in his letter, uh, in James 1 and 2, <clears throat> he says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Now, trials, 
don't make you happy, right? Uh, but when you have love for Yahweh and people, you'll walk in the confidence that all things work together for the good of those who love God. And as we were talking about earlier, loving God means keeping his commandments, walking in obedience. Uh, rest assured, the enemy can do nothing to a person without God's permission. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people make uh, poor decisions and they're experiencing the reaping of what they have sown. And they say, oh boy, the devil is really after me, you know, this week. Uh, poor decisions are not the enemy's fault. However, there are trials that sometimes we go through and the point of those trials is to make us better. Uh, so if you're going through a trial, then, uh, man, it's it's easy to say, but it's a lot harder to do. But trust, this is for your good, even if you can't see it right now, and try to hold on to the joy of the Lord, because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. All right, so next up, last topic I want to hit is uh, peace. Now, peace can simply be defined as the absence of conflict, okay? Uh, there are some people... And I see some of you on Facebook, man, you are always looking for a fight. That That's not supposed to be us. Uh, Yeshua says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now, we have the ministry of reconciliation. We are supposed to be bringing people to God. We're supposed to be bridge builders. Now, uh, you know, not brawlers. Now, I'm not suggesting that we don't fight, okay? I want to make this really clear. On the contrary, just like uh, Ecclesiastes says, there is a time for everything. There's a time to pick up the sword, and there's a time to put it down. The Bible says that Paul went into the synagogues every Sabbath, and he debated with the religious leaders, trying to convince them that Yeshua is the Messiah. Uh, but I'll say this, in discussing with a brother yesterday, uh, we started talking about jiu-jitsu. I've got a, a friend who's in our fellowship who is a, jiu a Brazilian jiu-jitsu instructor, and uh, he's very talented. We were talking about how you know, men can roll with each other. That's what they call it. They can bust each other's lip and give each other a black eye, and then uh, once somebody gets put in a chokehold and they finally tap out, then they let go. The, the man lifts the other man up. They hug and high-five and move on. Um, you know, during times of peace, if soldiers don't spar with each other, then how can they be ready when war actually comes? If there's something in Proverbs that says that, I missed, that should probably be in Proverbs, right? Uh, everybody's familiar with as iron sharpens iron, you know, so one man sharpens another. Obviously, some friction is implied there. So debate is good. Discussion is good. Uh, standing up against evil and being loud about it is good. Now, that's different from being a combative person. Poking the bear does not make you brave. It makes you stupid. Okay, so I've had to stop following some people on Facebook because they're always poking the bear. The Bible says we are not called to be brawlers. Uh, Paul told Titus this. I want to give uh, another passage here. In Titus 3, 1 and 2, uh, Paul is reminding Titus to remind the followers of Yeshua. He's telling them, teach them to be obedient, to speak evil of no one, uh, avoid quarreling, be gentle, and show perfect courtesy toward all people. I think that's very good advice. Uh, there's just one more point, and uh, we'll wrap up. I didn't want this to be a, a long live feed. A beautiful truth that I learned from the Fruits of the Spirit studying this yesterday is that one flows into another, uh, kind of like a water garden, you know, with the water flowing from one stone to another. Love leads to joy and joy leads to peace. When you are obedient to Yahweh uh, and you treat other people with love, then you're going to have joy because you are pleasing to God, and therefore He will take care of you. I just want to wrap up with one last passage, Proverbs 16 and 7, which says, oh, I messed up, Proverbs 16, 7. It says this, When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So hopefully uh, that's all I've got for today. Hopefully we will pick up on this uh, another time. Uh, as the other fruit 
singular is very important and definitely something we should be working on. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me, and I hope this has been beneficial. Have a great day.